I haven't done an update for a while, so here it is. And somebody brought up a few questions relating to my income this week. First thing I want to say is I'm not rich. Um, I, it's hard to say sometimes because my op opportunity for wealth, should we say, is probably better than a lot of other people, purely because of my engineering background. Um, also, I do bits and pieces. But... If I went to the Philippines tomorrow, I've got enough in the bank. I've got I've got enough in the bank for a year, and I've got enough monthly income to stay in the Philippines for up to the next twenty years. So I'm not struggling. Um, I'm earning more than most people's pensions are. Let's just call it that. But I'm not wealthy. Um, we do have our properties. We do have this and that. But I'm a cash buyer. Um, here in Spain. We rent, but when we buy the property, it's predominantly going to be at least 50% in cash. Um, the VW Transporter we bought is in cash. It's, it may need some repairs coming up. It will be paid for in cash. Um, what I do is I keep an amount in the bank. At the moment, it's sort of 12 months. And like the VW hammers me for some repairs. I will need to bring that back up to there. That's how I work. That's why I always say about this three-month limit. Because if I hit that three months, I have to get on a plane. It's as simple as that um, to put us back up to here. Um, and that's that's how I function. Um, now, what? why would I go back to work if I still got monthly income? The answer is, when it hits here, I'm basically... Uh, at risk of eating money. I've stopped moving forward. Um, but if I go back to work, the, the money that's in the bank will bring that back up naturally because the biggest cost in the Philippines, in the UK, or in the Spain is actually me because in the Philippines, I don't eat uh, dried fish and rice. In Spain, I don't eat the basic breads or whatever. I have a lot of stuff that's a little bit extravagant food-wise, but I enjoy food, same as April loves food. But the biggest expense is me. In the UK, I'm predominantly, okay, I'm covered on expenses. My restaurant meals and everything are covered, the car's covered, etc., etc. But I'm still the biggest financial liability. <laughs> um, so... From that point of view, this is why I say about three months. We've got we've got twelve months money at the moment, plus we've got monthly income. But if the twelve months is if we didn't, if, if I didn't have any monthly income, we could still be here for twelve months. But myself, I need space to grow, and this is why I'm now starting to look at how to progress things forward. So, I hope that answers the question. Now, the next question was, when am I coming back to the Philippines? Philippines may be this year, being next year, because it's December. Um, we need to sort all the paperwork out in Spain first. Um, Spain's extremely slow and tedious for paperwork. Um, partially my own fault, because if I'd done it all last November, I would have been already through no hurdles but here there's a lot of they make it up sometimes that's the easiest way of putting it because i'll go okay well you need to have two thousand in the bank and it's like where does it say two thousand because this is this isn't mine this is what happened to somebody else two thousand euros in the bank and then it's like, well, where does it say that? And then when he contested it and wrote to the head of the department, they just sent him the paperwork for his wife. It was just done because it was nothing to do with 2000 It wasn't even 2000 a month. It was just literally 2000 in the bank. I went down with 16,000 euros in the bank and they said, well, it's not enough. And I was like, well, how much do you want? And I, like, um, well, we don't know. So... How do I work this out? They're like, well, just get a job somewhere and then you can come back and then we'll just process it. And I'm like, this doesn't make any sense. If I go self-employed and just pay the social security payments for three months and then go back in, that's fine. They'll do that. You know, you know, having money there that's already more than enough for a year wasn't enough. 
So these things get in the way sometimes. You can either sit there and get annoyed about it or just go, okay, I'll do whatever it needs to be done so I can have a quiet life. So this is what's happening at the moment. So we're not going to be back in the Philippines for probably six months, I would have thought, because by the time I do my paperwork and this dog food stuff takes off, and I've got a few other things I'm working on at the moment, I'm just hoping that some of the cash flow works for Spain. Um, then once all that's up and running, we'll then look to take a trip out to the, the Philippines. Um, long term back to the Philippines will be a bit longer. Uh, we'll probably have our annual trips to the Philippines, but we're not looking at moving back over full time for foreseeable future at the moment because the kids have only just started school. Um, they're enjoying the new life in here, and they, you know, they're quite attached to their school already. So there's those sort of things going on. This is what I'm not like a single expat. Most single expats wouldn't care less. You know, they'd be like, "I'm going to the Philippines tomorrow." I've got family and stuff, and with Spain, I've got to get a property sorted out here. Although we're renting, I want to purchase one, and to purchase it, like I said, I want to put fifty percent down at least in the deposit because I hate having any debt whatsoever. So that's why I want the mortgage done, paid, bang. Then I want to hammer it monthly until there's nothing left. So yeah, I'm not moving um, back to the Philippines very soon. But if there's a business alter, uh, opportunities there, I can hop back in, help people get going and move that along. Now that I'll Put that on another video, actually. All right, thanks for watching.